Okay, we learned a good amount here about electromagnetic waves. Now let's put it down into some notes. Electromagnetic waves are oscillations in the electric and magnetic fields, and we can draw those oscillations using a wave shape. And it comes back out and goes back into the board. Now these wave shapes represent force arrows. So we could draw the magnetic arrows in blue, and the electric field or the electric force arrows, we draw those red. Notice how I'm connecting. A blue arrow connects with a red arrow. That's a nice way to draw it. These blue oscillations in the uh, magnetic field are oscillating up and down, and these red oscillations are directed out of the page and into the page. So it's hard to visualize, but it's just like what we saw in the animation. Finally, let's draw a black line representing the direction in which energy is transferred. So blue is magnetic. Red is the electric field, or the electric force field. And the black here is the direction of energy transfer. So these oscillations, this wave shape in the line of force, that line of force with this wave shape is being transferred forward. So energy transfer, or direction of energy transfer, perhaps. OK, let's fill out some notes. OK, let's take down some notes, summarizing what we've learned. Light is made up of an oscillating electric field and an oscillating magnetic field. That's what those arrows represent. These arrows represent the field, and the field is what carries the magnetic and electric force. Okay, these fields oscillate perpendicular to each other. And they are perpendicular to the direction of energy propagation. So, how does that make sense? Well, the electric field is oscillating in and out on the x-axis, the magnetic field is oscillating on the y-axis up and down, and the energy is being transferred on the z-axis, which is forward. Those three axes are all perpendicular to each other. Okay, the combination of these oscillating fields is called, here's our fancy word that we use, make ourselves sound smart, we call that combination an electro, electric, magnetic, so we've got both words, an electromagnetic wave. And these waves radiate out whenever you oscillate a charge, just like we saw with that charge inside the electron in the antenna. When you wiggle the thing up and down, this, this wave radiates out. And for that reason, we also call it electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic is a long word, and so if we're talking about EM waves, or equivalently EM radiation, we just use EM instead of writing or saying electromagnetic. These waves carry energy. And this makes sense, because if you take your antenna, here you are, you're the radio station, and you send that wave out to a home, then when those waves reach the receiver, these electrons gain energy. They start oscillating. Where is that energy coming from? It's coming from the electromagnetic wave itself. The waves are non-mechanical, which is very different from what we've seen before. This means they do not require a physical medium. Medium. Or in other words, they can travel through empty space, which is what we call a vacuum. Let's put that word down. Vacuum. And this is very different from mechanical waves. An example of a mechanical wave is sound. Sound is mechanical. It's composed of, comp composed of compressions and rarefactions. But you have to have something to compress and expand. In particular, we compress and expand particles. 
Without these particles, there's nothing to compress and expand, and you cannot produce sound. So we already looked at these questions. We're not going to go back through them again. Um, this one, the answer is no. You can hear yourself, though, because when you hear your own voice, you're listening to the vibrations produced in the soft tissue inside of your skull. Okay, visible light is one small sliver of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. It's a small portion of the full EM spectrum. This is something we learned probably in chemistry last year. Um, there is a broad range of electromagnetic radiation that we can produce. Visible light is one little sliver. Here is the full spectrum. So what are we looking at? We have different categories, radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma ray. And what distinguishes them? Well, I mean, they're all EM radiation. They all are the exact same thing as that picture we just drew. The only difference is their wavelength or frequency. Radio waves have really long wavelengths, and gamma rays have incredibly small wavelengths. Look at that value. 0. 0.000000000001 meters is the wavelength of a gamma ray. Some notable ones, visible light is a really small sliver right here. Uh, X-rays, we use this in imaging software, medical imaging software. Gamma rays, this is part of what you have emitted from radioactive waste in a nuclear power station. Radio waves, this is what we use in uh, Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, in cell towers, radio stations, uh, a lot of things use radio waves. Satellites use this too. Let's write these down. And here's how I remember the spectrum. Raging Martians attack, oh, whoops, invade Venus using X-ray guns. So we've got radio waves, microwaves, infra, red, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. So this is a good way to remember. As we go down the list, We are increasing frequency, so this is high frequency. And down here, or sorry, up here is low frequency. And of course, frequency and lambda wavelength are inversely proportional. So radio waves, let's say, have the longest wavelength, long lambda. And these are the shortest wavelengths. Those are the shortest waves, gamma rays. And finally, as you go down the list, as you increase the frequency, right, from here to here, these have more energy, these have less energy. So high energy, and these are low energy EM waves. So a question, which one do you think travels fastest? Ah, that's a trick question. They all travel at the same speed in a vacuum. The speed of electromagnetic radiation in a vacuum is 3.00 times 10 to the power of 8 meters every second. We use the letter C because this is the wave speed, and this is the speed, we call it the speed of light in a vacuum. But the speed of light is a misleading name. Why? Because this is the speed not only of visible light, it's also the speed of radio waves and x-rays and infrared. All of it travels at this same speed in a vacuum. So we really should call it the speed of EM waves. It's how fast those lines of force are transmitted through the electric and magnetic fields. It turns out, uh, Einstein famously made this, pr proved this in his theory of special relativity, this value, the speed of light in a vacuum, is the universe's speed limit. Nothing can move faster or travel faster than the speed of light. As we saw above, energy depends on frequency, 
and high frequency means high energy, the two turn out to be directly proportional. The energy of a wave, of a, of a light wave, is directly proportional to its frequency, and therefore is inversely proportional to the, uh, the wavelength.